I want you to open your Bibles to the book of Proverbs, chapter 17, verse 4. Proverbs 17, verse 4. It will be the only scripture you need today. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. We're about to find out. Can we pull up Proverbs 17, verse 4, on a different background? There we go. That's a nice one. But we'll probably have a better one coming right up. There we go. An evildoer listens to wicked lips, and a liar gives ear to a mischievous tongue. We're right now preparing our hearts for Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. We're preparing for those 10 days of awe, those times of asking for forgiveness. To be honest, most of you have not killed anyone, right? Raise your hand this year. No one's killed anyone, right? Murdered, stealed, right? But here's the one that gets most everybody. Listening to gossip. Now, you notice I didn't say speaking gossip. We know that one's a big problem, right? But listening to gossip is just as evil. Matter of fact, it's almost worse. What do we know about most gossip? It's wrong, right? Usually the facts are wrong. But you know what happens? It's that little thing that gets put in your mind, right? And even though you know you know it's wrong, it keeps on coming back up when you think about that person. And we have to be very careful because sometimes what's the easiest thing people think they could do when they hear gossip? Oh, I'm just not going to say anything, right? But you've now heard it, right? Your mind has started to process. We have a, 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 you know, our mind's like a computer, right? We joke around with Shaney sometimes in the office. She'll sit with us and she'll give us this blank stare and we say, downloading, 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 right? It's that time that we need to process, and we put information in, and even if it's wrong, it's still in there. And that's what we have to watch. We need to be careful when we're talking about people, and we need to be even more careful when we hear someone say something, because that's where evil really sets in. Because then you start looking at it, at that person or that situation from that point of view. You know, there's an old saying, in most situations I say there's not two sides to every story. There's how many? Three. There's each party, and then somewhere in the middle is the actual truth. We need to get to the truth, don't we? And so if you're here, what happens, how do you deal with, when you hear, hear gossip. Because you know what so many people hear, what I hear when someone says, well, I heard someone say this, but I didn't want to say anything to that. I didn't want to bring it to your attention. Why? Oh, I might, you might feel bad. You might be upset by that person. Well, shouldn't we be upset with that person? Did you hear about Rabbi Renee? He started losing his hair at a very young age, right? And people start, oh, that, you know, I want to hear about this. How, why did he start losing his hair at a young age, right? And that's the problem that happens. We, we want the, the gossip is interesting, so you want to listen, but it, it builds this mindset in your mind that we have to be very careful about. It's even worse when it's dealing with, with situations. Do you know how many times we hear in a congregation gossip? And it's usually about the leadership. Right? We've had people in the past. See, the devil likes to sneak people in every once in a while. 
And they'll have people that will come and all of a sudden they'll start asking for money. Right? That's an easy one. If someone approaches you in the congregation asking for money, what should your first thing be? What should be the first question you ask? Have you talked to leadership? Right? And as soon as they say no or they say, oh, well, you know, you can't talk to them about this. Oh, yes, we can. Let's go right now. Now, what have you done? Because here's reality. I will guarantee you that most people, they've either never will ask us, why won't they ask us? Pride. I can't ask Rabbi for money because that would be that would make me look like I, I haven't done my part. I'm I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not budgeting right or I'm not uh, doing things that I'm supposed to be doing. But I got this nice new hairdo, don't I? Look at this new purse I have. Or look at my na- nice new watch I have. Am I hitting some topics here for people? Right? We have to be careful in what we hear because then all of a sudden in your mind, oh, well, the congregation doesn't help people. Sure we do. You've got to ask. Or I've had this one. Well, I don't want to ask. Well, why not? Well, we just, I just don't want to. Well, then how are you supposed to let the, the, the congregation know that there's a need? Well, I'm talking to you. You're part of the congregation, right? Is that right for people to do? No. And if you're listening to that, you're you're usually, again, it's, well, I tried. Okay, well, why wouldn't the congregation give? I'll tell you some reasons why we don't give money to people. They keep coming and we we will give, and they'll come again, and they'll ask for the same thing, and they ask for the same thing, and they ask for the same thing. What have we not taught them? how to help themselves, right? And sometimes we become a crutch. Oh, I know I can go to the congregation and they'll be there to help me. Now, there's different times. We have people who honestly get in a situation and they'll say, Rabbi, you know, we're in this, but this is when we'll be taken. And, and, and they will literally pay it back to it. We're not talking about that. We're talking when, when someone keeps doing that, and then they start talking to other people. I guarantee you, if they're asking you for money, they're asking 10 other people for money. And they're probably getting it from all. Watch those people that do that. See, they're speaking evil, aren't they? So we need to be careful about those types of issues. Because they start putting false information out. You know, there's usually a reason. And here's the best way. If you're hearing something, you need to let us know. If that person, Rabbi, isn't that gossiping? No, you're telling a leader, right? You're not telling someone else. You're telling someone in authority, hey, I understand this person's having an issue. They might not have come to you. And you need to encourage that person to go to us. And if they said, well, I have, and they won't do it, does that mean you should do it? Well, then are you going against the authority? What is the authority? You know, sometimes I know things about other people here that you don't know. Right? It's not that we're trying to be mean. is we're trying to lift them up and equip them to do what God's calling you to do. And you know what? Sometimes you need to fall on your face so that you can get back up, right? We need failures in our lives so that we can learn from it. Because you know what? We learn more from failures than we do from accomplishments. Does that sound funny? But if you really think about it, if you did everything right all the time, you don't really learn that much, right? But when you mess up, okay, now i got to relook at these things. And that's what God's calling us to do. If someone comes to you and they're gossiping about someone else, 
You need to stop them right away. But more than that, stopping it's not enough. How do you cure the gossiper? I'll give you a hint. How do you take care of a bully? You confront him, right? A gossiper is another name for a bully, right? What are they doing? They're trying to intimidate you. They're trying to make you feel like, oh, well, they won't help me, but you should, right? You know better. How many times have you gone to a place and you've heard someone say, well, I don't really want to listen. I, I, I'm more educated than that person who's teaching, so I don't need a, to be here. Ooh, that person needs to be right where they're at, don't they? Because they got something to learn. I, I learn from people all the time, right? I don't care how much education you have. We need to be careful on how we act to people and how we respond. And when you hear that gossip going, as my, I got hooked here. That was not easy. There we go. As we hear gossip, we need to A, cut it off in the past, but then you need to take care of it too. Yeah, I was reading an interesting article about it, and they said, you know, that someone was saying that a person was having an affair in their office. And they said, you know what, we need to go to that person right now and talk to them because obviously they have an issue. And maybe we can help them so that they, you know, don't ruin their marriage and their whole family over this situation. Because here's what most things are really interesting. If something really is happening, the person usually thinks, oh, I'm so secretive, right, that no one's going to figure it out. Well, obviously, it's out, right? Now you got to stop it off before there becomes an issue. Or maybe you go to that person and then they say, well, you know, I'm using just a generic name, Sue here, heard that you were having an affair with somebody. And that person looks at you and goes, what are you talking about? Right? You can confront it and take care of it. It will also stop the person who's spreading the lies. Because when that happens, that's like, you know, a what do you do when a cancer gets into the body? You go and take the cancer out, right? Why? What happens if you leave the cancer in? It spreads. Gossip is a cancer, and it spreads. And it's like that. Remember that game you played as a kid where you would tell one person a word, and then they would tell another one, another one? And by the time it got to the end, you, know, you started off and says, you know, a blue jay is blue, and at the end it's, you know, Joe Schmo owns a, 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 a grocery store, right? It's something totally different. Why? Because as things get passed along, people add their own things into it. We need to be careful that we're not a conduit to lies and to falsehood. You know, like I said, we've seen, and we've seen these stories. I've seen it at other congregations. You can ask any pastor or rabbi. They will tell you the same exact thing. We, we can see people that come in. And all they want is money. And all, it's all the, and, and when, you, when you cut them off, oh boy, do they have stuff to say to you. But they don't say it to us. You know who they say it to? The body. Oh, you won't believe that. They won't give me any money. I, I need a hip replacement, right? They come up with every story in the book. If you hear that, what do you need to do? You come to us. Guess what? We can say, hey, yeah, we've heard about this. Or no, maybe we haven't heard. But not saying anything is just as bad. I've had people say to me, oh, but I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. Okay, what is that person doing that's gossiping? Hurting people's feelings, right? Doesn't that need to be stopped? Doesn't the person that they or, or organization that they're talking about need to be able to have that stopped? Because then it keeps spreading. And then it becomes a bigger issue, right? See, when you can cut it off at the past, you guys are real quiet on me. 
This is not one of the, this is not, you know, you could go to Joel's and be happy and smiling, right? We're not doing that one, are we? We're digging deep, right? See, we need to make these changes in our life because this is really what the Word's about. God tells us don't gossip. It's one of the things he hates the most. That's a pretty, you know, when you make it in the top ten, you got a problem, don't you? We don't want to gossip, and we don't want to listen to it. So how do you deal with it? When someone starts gossiping, stop them. Don't you have that authority? Yes. You can say, you know what, I don't want to hear it. And I've had to do that before. So well, let me tell No, I don't want to hear it. If there's an issue, we can talk, bring that person in, and we'll talk. But we need to set the boundaries. And when you do hear that gossip, you need to go and get it corrected. Be either take that person to the one they're talking about or bring it to leadership. You know, we have a good heart, right? As believers, we want to help everybody. How many of you see people on the street that are homeless and asking for money? Right, you see, don't you want to give them something? Sometimes, right? Other times, what's the feeling? Uh, I've seen them, they're right here every week, every day. Do you know, I knew a guy who was, he was truly disabled. He, he was in a wheelchair. And he used to be in downtown Atlanta, and we were, uh, this is back when we owned our own business, and we were uh, liquidating out stores that had gone out, and this guy would be begging on the street. And he would come into the, our store to use our phone, this is before cell phones, because if it, if, it, if it was during the time of cell phones, trust me, he would have had one. And he would call his wife up and say, all right, I'm, I'm getting ready to, to come home. Do you want lobster or steak tonight for dinner? He used to bring in the change and ask us to, to change it out for him. People would give him so much McDonald's that he, he wouldn't even, he just threw it away. He didn't eat it. He ate lobster and filet mignon. And we would have people that would hand out flyers on the streets. And he came to me and one day said, he goes, you know, he would kind of tell on them when they weren't doing their job. He said, let me do it for you. And I said, I'll let you do it, but here's one catch. You cannot ask for money. You cannot beg. We will pay you, but you cannot beg. He said, okay. He went out and did it the first day, came back and said, you know, I appreciate you giving me the opportunity, but I make more money begging <laughs> than I do this. You know, he was bringing in, and this was in the 80s, over $100 a day. Tax-free. And that's in addition to all the money he got from the government. He wasn't there on Sunday, so he figured, oh, he's making $40,000 plus. Not too shabby, is it? We got to be careful. You can tell the person who's truly hurting. And you can help them. But don't get deceived by those who are playing you. Test the spirits. We need to be careful. When we hear things, we need to respond in the right way. We need to make sure that we stop gossiping. Because for the most righteous of people, that's one of the most easiest ways to get pulled into Satan's trap. You're not trying to do it. You're not the one gossip, but you're hearing it. And that's what the issue is all about. There's some of you that probably need to apologize to people about that, don't you? But you also now know how to deal with it. You stop the person. Change the subject on them, right? If, they, if you're in a situation where you can't get them to stop, 
Although, let me tell you, if you're in a situation they're telling to more than one person, you sh- what's your responsibility? Make them stop. But Rabbi, they're a friend of mine. What, hap- what will happen? Are they really a friend? Is their friendship that important to you? Or are you a better friend when you help them to grow in the Lord? That's what this time of year is about. Taking a look within ourselves and seeing how we need to change. How we can help to stop the murmuring. I've seen congregations split over false information. And usually a person who's doing it has a gripe with the leadership already, right? Do you think they're really telling the truth? You know, I was talking to a, a rabbi in another state, and he was telling me a situation that he was having. And he was upset because this couple was leaving. And they left because they were, getting, they were moving from one location to another. That was less than five miles apart. And he said, well, I don't understand why they're leaving. I said, why are they leaving? Because they've been wanting to leave, but this is their excuse. What, they can't drive an extra two minutes? Come on. Right? And what he found out afterwards, after they left, were, they were what they, things that they were saying that weren't true. They never came to them. And people said, well, they said they did. Again, there's two sides to every story, right? And most of the time, there's three. (laughs) We as believers must stand strong on God's word. Search gossip and see how many times it comes up. We can do better. We need to stand strong. We can't, if, if you, you know, one of this Proverbs talks about, you know, there's no wood for a fire. What happens to the fire? It goes out. If there's no one there to listen to the gossiper, then there's no gossip. Reminds me of the old saying, if a tree is in the wilderness and it falls and there's no one around, does anyone hear it? The answer is it really doesn't matter because no one was around to hear it, right? (laughs) We have to understand. We can't be a part of the party. We need to be a part of the solution. And that's what God's calling us to do. When you hear someone doing it, bring them into accountability. It will help them and help others. And if it's truly a friend, they will appreciate you in the long run. And if not, you'll know where they stood with you as well. That's what God's calling us to do today. As we get ready to prepare our hearts, let's be pure. Let's be able to stand for His will. Amen? I'm going to be short today. You guys, I beat you up enough. <laughs> right? Does anyone need to, do I need to take anyone else around the mountain just one more time? <laughs> I love if you, Lord, I had to go around the mountain. No, you didn't. You just had to get off the train. <laughs> right? Don't let them take you around again. Do you have that relationship with Yeshua? Do you need to be set free of gossip? The first step is to get Yeshua into your heart. If you've never accepted Yeshua as your Messiah to clean you from your sins. If you're watching online, you can contact us through the address you see there. You can call us. If you're on the site now, you can let us know and we will pray for you right now. But wherever you are around the world, we will call you and pray with you that prayer of salvation. But if you're here in the congregation right now, and Abba, Father, we just come before you right now. Lord, cleanse our heart. Lord, close our ears to gossip. 
Let us not be a conduit for the evildoer. Lord, let us learn and grow to be closer to you. We ask this in your son Yeshua's precious name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen.